Hey guys, today we're illustrating chunky knits. And I say chunky knits, not that they're all chunky, but more like to separate them from thin t-shirt knits, like little modal jerseys, but more like you can really see the yarn and you can see the stitches, that kind of knit. Um, you know, when it comes to t-shirt knits, there's really nothing special about rendering t-shirt knits. I mean, if it's a shiny t-shirt knit, then you do it shiny. And, you know, if it's drapey, you draw the drapes. And if there's no texture, you just, you know, do the base color and you add some shadows. Whatever, right? So t-shirt knits aren't a big deal. Chunky knits require a little bit more finesse with the texture. So... You know, there are a million kinds of knits out there, approximately 2.7 million kinds of yarns, and approximately 17 million varieties of stitches, including size and repeats and different patterns and what have you. So I'm going to give you guys a bunch of tips on how to approach rendering knit sweaters and cardigans and let this be kind of a foundation for you to explore because remember the number one thing about rendering any specific fabric knit woven fur leather non-wovens what have you is to really look at your swatch under good light and follow what your swatch is telling you first of all let's talk about drawing Draw big, you guys. Most of the time when we wear fuzzy sweaters and cardigans, we are typically not wearing something that's super tight to the body. We want something that's a little bit roomy, a little bit soft and cozy, and, you know, you can wear it to Thanksgiving dinner and, you know, room to grow, <laughs> so to speak. You want it to be comfortable. So draw big shapes, big drapes. When you draw these, you're not going to draw skinny, little, silky, uh, crinkly drapes, but luscious sort of rolls that come with the thickness of knit fabrics. Number two, no shine. Okay? Even if you were to use a really shiny yarn, even if you literally cut vinyl into strips and then use that as yarn to knit, you're still not going to get big highlights because the, the knit structure is going to break up the highlights into teeny tiny little highlights. Okay? So nothing where you have broad highlights, you know, across the shoulders or down an arm. Number three, much like when we were rendering fur, your shadows need to follow the texture. Now I'm going to show that to you when I'm doing the illustration, but keep that in mind. You can't have a nubbly knit cardigan and then in the shadow areas it's just like flat and straight no the shadows are going to follow the texture whether it's a really curly blue, blue clay looking thing or very precise you know stitches that look like little v's your shadow has to follow the texture i have a sneeze stuck in my face and it is so annoying ah Number four, you need to bring the texture all the way to the edge. You know, when you have a nice fuzzy knit like this, you see the edge of it, you see the curly loops sticking up and little hairs coming out. So you don't want to render like a smooth, clean silhouette. You want a little bit of that fudge coming, fudge, fuzz, fuzz, not the same a little bit of that fuzz coming to the edge. Not as much as the fur, because most furs are fluffier than knits, but you do want to see a little bit of that along the edge. Oh my God, this is going to kill me trying to film this with this sneeze stuck in my face. Come on, face. Number five, whenever you have any kind of pattern, like cable knits, ribs, you know, really big visible moss stitches, anything like that, you're going to use the same methods that I taught you guys about rendering print fabrics. 
And so all those methods that I taught you guys about scaling the pattern down, using the palm of your hand, following the grain line of the garment to lay out your repeat, and using the eight foot rule to figure out what the important elements are and what you can leave out, you're going to apply those same methods to knit. So it's like basically print plus texture equals knit. So now that we've done that, I'm going to show you a few things. So people who are familiar with my channel know that when it comes to marker paper, I like to draw on the wrong side and render on the right side. Notice how large of a garment I drew. It's very roomy. Yeah, he could totally eat a huge Thanksgiving dinner and then pop his top button on his pants and then slide that sweater right over it. These cables... They're 3D, they stand out. Diamond cables, cables, double snakes, whatever. They stand out and so I included the bumps of each cable in the silhouette, which you need to do, okay? If it stands out, if it looks 3D, you need to put that in into the silhouette. For this rendering, I'm gonna use markers, but this method of rendering that I'm about to show you right now, can be done with paints. You're just gonna need to wait for paint to dry in between steps. What you're gonna need are three colors of marker and two color of color pencils. You're gonna need three markers that are the same color but in three different shades, very close to one another. This is a 30% warm gray. This is a 40% warm gray, the 50. And then I have corresponding warm gray color pencils in 30 and 50 percent. Right, so you see how all those harmonize together. Because there are no shiny areas, you're not going to leave the white of the paper for any reason. And so go ahead and marker the entire sweater. I have a video on basic fashion illustration using markers. I have a video all about how to find a light source and build shadows. I'll drop those links below if you need those refreshers. For me, whenever I am rendering and I'm drawing or I'm coloring wide spaces of color, I like to color one section at a time. I find that it reduces streaking. The best way to combat this is to let each section be wet at the same time and dry at the same time. So I would paint this sleeve and let it all be wet at once and then dry at once. And then I would move to this sleeve and let it be wet at once and dry at once. You get patchiness and oversaturation and streakiness when you have a piece and things are wet and then they're drying and then you're covering things up and then they're all drying at different, uh, at different points of time and you're overlapping too much color and that's where streaking happens, right? You want everything in each section to be wet at the same time and dry at the same time. And so I, whether I'm using markers or paint, I've gotten into the habit of do this turtleneck, do each yoke, do each sleeve, each cuff, waistband, and then front panel, et cetera, et cetera. So I colored the whole sweater in the 30% warm gray, which is my lightest color. I'm gonna take my 40% gray and put in the shadows. Let's say this is my light source over here. I'm gonna put in like rounded, soft, mushy shadows. So underneath the roll of the sweater and on the dark side. In here, the dark side of the arm, and then again, underneath this roll, and then this part of the neck. Drop shadow separating the collar from the body. The armpits are always dark. This is kind of tucked away back here, so I'm gonna cuff, do that whole cuff. Now, each of these cables are 3D, and so just like in the quilted fabrics exercise, you're going to shadow every single individual piece. 
So I'm going to shadow here. And keep those shapes nice and round. And drop shadow from the cable. And then when you have rib knits, basically you have it coming up and then down and then up and then down, up and then down. And so each, every other rib is going to be slightly darker. And so those are all going to get a shadow. So. Follow the direction, you know, the rib's going to spread as it crosses, as it expands and stretches around the chest. It's going to roll up like this. Follow the curves of his shoulder. And then I'm going to take my darkest gray, my 50%, and I'm going to punch in some shadows and put in the rib in the shadow areas get in here and put in some even darker shadows and now you're starting to see the three-dimensional form of the sweater and the shadows and the cables and the ribs but everything looks really smooth right now now if you have a relatively smooth knit then i guess you could stop here but i want it, the texture to show more so this is where i'm going to start adding the color pencil Tip you guys, you don't want to put marker on top of color pencil. You want to put color pencil on top of marker when you're working. This does not just apply to knits, but in general, because if you put this waxy pencil on top of marker, that's fine. There's nothing on the marker here that's going to get into your color pencil and mess it up. But if you put marker on top of color pencil, the wax from your color pencils is going to get lifted up into your marker nib and mess up your marker nib and the color. So if you do do that by mistake, just kind of clean out your marker by running it over clean paper a few times, but try to avoid that as much as possible. So this is my 30% warm gray color pencil, and I'm going to just lightly color the whole sweater just to give it a little bit of texture. For this step, I like to use a rough watercolor paper or any rough surface actually. One time I was in a class where the walls had this, uh, had that stucco texture. And so I just rubbed it right up against the wall. If you're painting, you need to make sure that your paint is 389% dry before you work on this step. Trying to put color pencil on wet paint is just, it's a lovely disaster. Mm, that was sarcasm, by the way. It's just a true and ugly mess. And so you're building this kind of texture. And of course, you can get other textures with different papers. You know, play around if you have some scraps laying around. You can totally reuse the paper afterwards, so it's not like you're going to mess up the paper and waste a piece if you don't like how the texture turns out. And of course, you're going to select these colors based on what's going on with your yarn, right? And then I'm going to take my 50% warm gray, and I'm going to color in the shadows. Put in my shadows so that I'm softening the edges of the shadow. So I'm going right up in there so that there's nothing that looks really crisp. You know, knit sweaters aren't crisp. Everything is soft, fuzzy, textured. Remember to bring it out to the edge a little bit to get that texture, a little bit of fuzz, right? You know, as much as I hate using regular pencils, sometimes when it comes to mushy, beautiful, nubbly knits, I'll use an actual regular pencil because it gives me a slightly softer look. And I'll go in there and I will punch out the details.
and keep your line quality just soft. Just keep that texture in your line quality. You don't want to start ruining by doing thick, blocky lines or sharp lines or anything like that. Your cables. If you have a knit where the stitches are so very big that you could see individual stitches, this is where I would go in and put the, some of them in. Not all over, you don't need to do every single stitch, but kind of sprinkle them around so it does look like it is an all over effect. Following the grain. You're going to focus this kind of texture detail work in the areas where the light is hitting it, right? No need to show off details in the shadows. And there is your fuzzy, chunky knit sweater. So again, you could do this whole thing in paint and color pencil where you paint all the marker stuff, wait for everything to dry before you add the color pencil and pencil. You could do it all with color pencil too. Just you would need like to build more color pencil color on top. The whole thing is the color pencil texture anyway, so that's fine. And then put in the pencil work on top. When I'm painting knit sweaters, my favorite is to actually use watercolor pencils. If you're not familiar with watercolor pencils, they are color pencils that or they look like color pencils and you can add water to them to activate the paint and then they become watercolors if you haven't already go ahead and check out my intro to paints for fashion designers and illustrators video where i talk about various watercolors and go over you know pros and cons of watercolor pencils my favorite thing about watercolor pencils is how I can play with different textures using the wet and dry and wet to dry, half wet, half dry textures you can create with watercolor pencils. When it comes to watercolor pencils, there's a lot of fun things you can do. You can, if you see a lot of really fat stitches, you can do stitch by stitch. You need some water, your pencil, and just go ahead and dip your pencil right in there and you can create fat stitches and you can just bring all those stitches straight across. You know, you don't have to do the entire sweater, but you, if you want to create this texture, that is one beautiful way of doing it. Another way of doing it is to lay down some water and then draw all your stitches. And notice because of the wet in both scenarios, the color pencil color is just starting to get soft and bleedy, resembling knits, right? If you don't want the white spaces in there, what I also like to do is to color in a base. Remember, you can just treat this as a paint and you can color in whatever sweater and then you can take your color and Work in sections, make sure everything is still wet as you're working because once it gets dry, it doesn't look any different from any other color pencil. 
which is fine. That soft, fuzzy texture also works. But if you want this look, you got to make sure that your paper or your pencil is still dry. Wet. Ah, bleh, bleh. I mean, honestly, you could do the whole thing in paint too. Just take a small brush. This is a size one. You know, if your stitches are extra fat. And of course, right now I'm doing a bunch of V's for ease of fast demoing, but obviously you're going to mimic whatever stitches you have going on in your knit. When you're working with watercolor pencils, again, draw your shapes large, of course, for the knit and If you're going to use dark colors, like this dark red that I'm using right now, make sure that you, when you're drawing on your paper, it's a little bit dark so that you can actually see the drawing under the paint. If your whole illustration is gonna be white people wearing white dresses, then yeah, draw, every, do your underdrawing very lightly. If you're going to draw a bunch of dark skinned people wearing dark color clothes, draw a little darker so you can really see it while you're painting dark colors. My favorite method to do knits is to do a stipple and create a wet dry look all over. You can't do this with regular color pencil. Here's a regular color pencil. If you add water to a regular color pencil, it doesn't do anything. It just stays the same. Whereas if you add color to a watercolor pencil, you activate the paint and it becomes like that. At this point, I'm going to add the shadows onto the sweater. Like any other paint, the more pigment you have, the less water you have, the darker the watercolor is, right? And so we're gonna lay down more color pencil and that's adding more pigment. So let's say that's my light source. The sleeve back here, it's all tucked behind her. I'm gonna make this whole thing dark. And then This hip, drop shadow here, red knit here. I'm not really going to go for an underbust shadow because it's not really form fitting around her breast. So you're not really going to see much in terms of shadow right there. All right, so now that I've laid down all my shadows, I'm going to take one of my super crusty, just stabby brushes. I'm going to just add just not even that much. I'm gonna wipe off some of the excess on a paper towel and I'm gonna tap. And so you're going to be adding just a little bit of water so that you still get some of that texture, but it's filling in the white spaces with some paint, but you're creating this gorgeous wet dry texture. Now I did most of it, then I'm gonna take a smaller stabby brush Take it to the edges. Always start with less water. You can add more water, but it's really hard to take it away. Ooh, too much water, ah! And then I always do the shadow parts at the end because I want even less water on my brush to keep these dark areas really dark and pigmented. And remember, you can bring that fuzziness to the edge so that we're seeing that texture right up to the edge there. And you, you know, you want a stiff brush so that you can stipple. If you were to use a really soft brush at this point, it would just mush everywhere, slide around. Now, at this point, there are some areas where I got a little crazy with the water and I added a little bit too much and I lost some of the texture. What you wanna do to fix that is to wait for this to be 712% dry 
And then go in with a little bit of your color pencil again and just add a little bit of that texture back in. Don't do it when it's wet. It's going to be super ugly. So there you have it, some of my favorite ways to render textured chunky knits. If you have any questions, check the info box. If your answer is not there, drop me a comment below. Yeah, the watercolor pencil techniques are a, a tiny bit more advanced than other techniques. It is something that I tend to teach later in the semester after students have conquered other skills like different textures, and how to do prints. So if you don't get it the first try, don't beat yourself up. You know, watch the print rendering video. You know, watch this video again. And of course, the magic word is practice. All right. I'm so annoying with that, right? But again, I am not made of magic. I'm made of practice. And you know what? So are you. So get to work and I will see you next time.